Hi, everyone, and welcome to our final session. I don't know if you can hear me or not because I don't have my mic. So can you hear me without the mic? <laughs> you can. <laughs> I don't know. All right, but I'll put it in anyways, just in case. So I don't echo, but I figured you could hear me. All right, so this is our last session for day one of MMVC18, and uh, it's been really exciting. This is um, our last session. By the way, I can't wait till tomorrow and the day after. There are so many amazing uh, sessions from people who are doing amazing things. Not everyone's an educator. I want to make that clear. We also have some tech people who are um, involved in education, but that's not their role. So let me... Um, introduce our next speaker and not take too much of her time. Susan uh, is a colleague and good friend. We've uh, connected for many years. Uh, she was born in London and brought up uh, as a bilingual in Italy. Uh, she uh, has also spent some time studying uh, in London until um, she was 15 when she finished her British education. She uh, at the Munich. So she was actually in Germany also. She's got a few languages there uh, that she's uh, very fluent in. Uh, she continued teaching parallel to interpreting while she was in Germany, which is why she's been teaching for 39 years. Uh, so uh, take off a few years there because she started teaching English, I think, at the age of 15. But she'll tell us about that, how she got to 39. If she's only 39, I don't know. She also prepares students for a variety of certifications. She has an online YouTube channel that's going to be really, really something one of these days. But, you know, YouTube takes time. But she's doing, she's creating uh, some really uh, very useful uh, YouTube videos for English language learners. So, Susan, I'm going to give you the mic here. I think you're at the beginning because it goes alphabetical order. So there are your tools and you should be ready to go. So hi, <laughs> there we are. There's the famous room that you see on YouTube too. <laughs> I didn't realize <laughs> I like it. My... I do. I mean, you don't think that I follow you on YouTube? Well, I well, thought like you have lots of other things to do. What do you mean? Well, uh, not only follow me. No, um, of course I not, apologize. I do. Uh, I'm trying to sort this out. I apologize because this screen is, uh, I mean, the um, the image of me looks terrible now. It's hazy uh, because, unfortunately, I had the painters in the other day, and I don't know what the painter thought of. He pushed my desk, and the computer fell down. So it. it uh, the screen's broken, but I realized that a lot of dust has come in front of the camera lens. So unfortunately, I'm, yes, not as clear as I should be. But anyhow, you'll be watching the slides, not so much me. But I wanted then to I tell you, Susan, if you don't move to avoid, um, I mean, you have to stay static and then and then it's completely clear. It's only when you move that the dust kind of goes in. So uh -huh. just speak. Don't move. <laughs> I know it's hard. Okay. Yeah, very hard also because I gesticulate usually. Um, yeah, then I wanted to um, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, counting my years. I didn't update because I'm afraid that if people see how many years I've been teaching, they think I'm just way too old. I mean, I am old, but I don't feel it. So I just calculated that I've actually got 42 years of teaching meanwhile, not 39. Uh, but I don't know if I should write that one down. Um, I started when I was 17 just because my mother was a teacher and she was operated on her throat. She was teaching just the evening classes uh, and she was operated on her throat. We were living in Germany. And so she asked me to take over for that week. And I said, well, I have no idea. I've never taught. She said, well, just follow the book. <laughs> and that's what I did. Um, and the school was quite happy because the year after they asked me to teach some classes of my own. And that's where my teaching career started. Obviously, then um, uh, studies took over. 
but uh, my very first lessons were impromptu, let's say. So it's a long time, yes. And that's why I have this slide here, because um, I know that it's not very, well, I've, I've often read that it's not a good thing to teach all kinds of people, but I don't like um, always teaching the same people because I find it gets repetitive in the boring sense. And if I'm bored, then the lessons get boring and the students get bored. So I teach a variety of people. Uh, so adults at evening classes, the conversation, uh, courses from beginners to advanced, online individuals in pairs, and also groups, uh, so teaching non-language teachers who will then subsequently have to teach um, their own subject, but in English. So uh, that's uh, more or less, yes, one of the first um, things that I've been teaching. Then I teach teenagers, which are a problem of their own, um, and young children in small groups, uh, preschool children as well. Um, and I teach uh, all these at school as well as uh, on my own. Uh, I teach courses during school, after school. So I have, a, of course, a lot of lesson preparation to do because um, the uh, courses are so varied, but that's what makes my life more interesting too. Um, I've noticed that I can transpose things and uh, I'm amazed at how much, for example, adults uh, are interested in trying out children's things. Um, I sometimes, on particularly on beginner adults, will say, well, you know, I usually do this with children. I don't know if you want to try it out. I have what I call a preposition chant, for example. And I'll say, well, if you want to try it out, see how you get along with it. And they really enjoy it. And that amazes me, actually, because um, some adults are a little shy, but others... Uh, including my sister-in-law, have discovered that uh, the method we use for teaching children is actually very effective for adults. Just adults feel that they're too old for songs and um, role play and things like that. So anyhow, that's uh, the premise. Uh, so um, I try to make learning as effective but also as interesting as possible and uh, repetition is the key to learning um, once you've, let's say, understood the mechanisms. Repetition is definitely the key. Uh, so songs, reading, games. But um, I teach as an external teacher. So I enter the classroom where students have already been used to the traditional method of teaching. And when I turn up, they feel very often, I mean, some of them demotivated, bored. So my objective is to consolidate what the teacher's been doing, but bring in some, um, yes, excitement uh, for it. And an experience that I particularly had this year was a high school. They had a special funding, so they called me in in the afternoon and they picked out the most needy students uh, about 16 to 17 years old, and said, you guys have to stay after school and uh, take part in these extra two hours lessons for a few months because it's an opportunity, it's free, and uh, it'll do you good. So after six hours of more or less non-stop lessons, because in Italy they get one or maximum two 10-minute breaks, where they're so short the breaks that they can't even go out, uh, so, I mean, they are really tired. They had 15 minutes to gobble down a sandwich and then I turned up. So I already knew it was going to be difficult and uh, they were a challenge. But the feedback I got at the very end of the few months uh, was really positive. And that was because I tried to implement a lot of games uh, uh, to consolidate. Uh, and I was really happy of the feedback. They all said, oh, it's so tiring at the end of the day. And also they were not really very studious. So to get them to learn, improve, the teachers took a test at the beginning of the session and then at the end of the couple of months of lessons, and they verified improvement. Uh, so I was very happy with that. Um, I mean, they definitely got higher marks afterwards. So uh, as you can see from this slide, uh, the first thing I implemented with them was this classroom screen. 
uh, if I remember correctly, it's called classroomscreen.com. You can choose uh, the background. You can set it up in a couple of seconds. And uh, it's very nice because apart from writing, drawing and the usual things, uh, it has a traffic light which can start and stop activities. Uh, it has uh, various um, indications such as the silence here, for example. Um, it's got some dice, so you can roll one, two or three dice um, for all the games. You can keep an eye on the time and it has a timer. And I use the timer a lot. Um, for example, the very first lesson and a half, uh, I didn't want to spend too long on it. Um, we uh, introduced ourselves, but instead of the boring, okay, now introduce yourself, who are you? I called it one minute speaking and set the timer to one minute. And I gave an example, I introduced myself in one minute and uh, I got about half the class to introduce themselves in a minute and the subsequent lesson, I got the other half of the class to do so. And the teacher who was with me, uh, it was um, she was the coordinator, um, she was very impressed with this. She decided to implement it in her adult classes too. So, I mean, there are these small things that give an element of excitement and make it that much uh, more interesting. I mean, in the end, they were just talking about themselves, but they knew they had to condense it into one minute. They didn't make too many mistakes. And uh, yeah, it was uh, something interesting. So um, you can make uh, games out of almost anything, uh, as long as they feel they're playing, um, they will participate. Um, they have a completely different attitude as soon as it's a game. So um, another problem with games is to make sure that everyone is involved and excluding as a few people as possible because, for example, if you do general conversation, you'll have one or two people speaking and the others all falling asleep or doing their own thing. If you have pair work, it's much better, but uh, you as a teacher have to zoom around to see uh, that they're actually not making too many mistakes. So instead, this activity that I've drawn up here is uh, called the interruption game. And you stand the person, this black dot is supposed to represent a person, uh, in the middle of the classroom, possibly one of the best students for the first time. It works better and then you can swap in weaker students. That person has um, a time limit that we can decide, five minutes, maybe not too long, five, five to seven minutes usually. Uh, that person has to in detail describe their day. So I wake up at seven o'clock and so on and so forth. And all the other students represented by the brown dots have to stop the person from uh, speaking. So um, the winner, is after five to seven minutes is the speaker if she or he gets to the end of the day uh, within the time limit but it has to be a detailed description obviously. Uh, the others will ask any pertinent question to block the person from carry on. So I wake up at seven o'clock and I don't know, I brush my teeth. So have you got an electric toothbrush? Do you have a shower in the morning? Do you use a, a duvet or blankets? What color are your pajamas? And so on and so forth. Uh, so um, that gets the whole class uh, active thinking of questions, uh, interrupting. The fun is trying to block them. And of course, if they manage to block them enough, uh, the um, speaker has to answer the questions and therefore will not get to the end of their day when the time is up. Uh, this is just an example of a game, which in reality is just questions and answers, but um, made in a game-like way, everyone is involved at the same time and uh, all the class is paying attention. Uh, I find it's, it's very interactive. Uh, um, yes, I think it's something that um, I enjoy doing uh, because it's very effective. 
So um, changing completely, uh, this was actually something, uh, an activity that I did with uh, smaller children, as you can see from the pictures. But um, the first thing I want to say is that when you create a game, if you involve the students in the game creation, it will be that much more meaningful for them. So, for example, here I created a Happy Families game. And uh, I, of course, printed, as you can see, the words, but I got them to draw in the pictures so that they would be practicing their vocabulary and consolidating them by the actual drawing of the pictures. And then comes the interesting part, the actual game. So here I've actually only put um, two families, as I call them. I don't know how many of you know the Happy Families game, the traditional Happy Families game. You have a family with four members and um, you have to, I mean, the ca cards are uh, given out to random and you as a player have to collect a family and the person with the most family is the families is the winner. So you usually ask another member, have you got, I don't know, Miss, the Smith family, have you got Tom Smith and so on? If the person has it, he passes it saying, yes, I have. Uh, if he hasn't, it's his turn to ask. And I've transposed this um, into uh, categories. Um, years ago, I had a an only vocabulary category, so it was only practicing have you got, but uh, my car got broken into and all my materials, including my school uniform, got stolen and I'd made that by hand. This was pre-computer era and I never felt like um, doing that again, laminating it all, lots of work. So um, a few years ago, I thought, well, let's get the children to do it. So for example, on the right, you have the flying family uh, fly a kite, an airplane, a drone, and a helicopter. On the left, you have the feelings family. So do you feel angry, scared, tired, hungry? But of course, there are families for all kinds of verbs. And this time around, though, um, have you got, I find, is a bit limiting. So um, I decided to put feelings and verbs so that you can use a variety of structures. So yes, have you got? Go swimming. Yes, I have. But you can also practice the present continuous. Are you going swimming? Yes, I am. Do you go swimming every day? Yes, I do. Simple past. Did you go swimming yesterday? Yes, I did. Present perfect. Have you ever gone swimming in the ocean? Yes, I have. Future. Will you go swimming with your friends? Yes, I will. Do you like going swimming in lakes? Yes, I do, and so on. So these cards with verbs, um, compared to the vocabulary, these cards have a much wider scope. They're much more flexible, and I don't play the game as often as the children would like. I've also played it with adults, uh, just because it's a little bit time consuming but it is really very, very effective because this repetition element uh, consolidates the structures and um, they're speaking in a very guided context, obviously, but they're learning vocabulary, they're practicing their grammar and they're practicing their speaking, which is something that um, I like to concentrate on. So um, I teach everything from grammar to speaking to listening and so on. But because uh, the schools um, in my area concentrate a lot on grammar, I prefer to concentrate on listening and speaking, uh, which is what is sorely needed. Uh,